Today's lesson is called Palau, Paradise on Earth. Hello everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going traveling to a tropical paradise in the Pacific Ocean. Maybe you've heard of it, Palau, and maybe you're into this sort of thing, going to tropical islands with beautiful beaches and things like that. To some people, these places could be described as a paradise on Earth. Ooh, did you say? Tropical beaches and palm trees and stuff like that.、Oh, I did. That's right up my alley. I love going to places like these. In fact, my wife and I we got married in Hawaii, another paradise on Earth. And yes, Palau is a paradise on Earth. And one of the great things, though, about Palau is that it's near Taiwan. Okay. Very often when we talk about places we can visit in this magazine, sometimes they're far away. Maybe in Europe, maybe Hawaii, maybe in South America. But here, Palau, Palau is just a short plane ride away. In fact, you can fly directly, I think, from Taipei to Palau, or you can fly there through the Philippines, and it's not too tough. Yes, Palau is within your reach, everyone, and it's most definitely a paradise on Earth. You'll go there, and you won't want to leave. It's just that great. It's just that much. Of a beachy, wonderful paradise. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading from our article called "Palau: a Paradise on Earth." Palau: Paradise on Earth. A chain of about 340 islands in the Pacific Ocean is home to some of the best dive locations and richest marine life in the world. If you want to be transported to a tropical paradise, Pack your beach gear and hop on a plane to Palau. Hello, everyone. The first part, we see a phrase called "be home to," a noun, used to stress that a person or thing belongs to a place. It means that the place is a place of residence or a place of residence. For example, Berlin is home to some famous universities, orchestras, and museums. Berlin has many famous universities, orchestras, and museums. 另外，补充一个相关的片语，可以用 be the home of 名词来表示某地是点点点的发源地或栖息地。所以可以说 Taiwan is the home of bubble tea. So travelers usually make sure to try the beverage while visiting. 台湾是珍珠奶茶的发源地，所以游客来访时通常一定会尝试这种饮料。再来，我们看到的单字是 marine， 这个字为形容词，指海洋的，像是。Colin went scuba diving in Australia because he has always been fascinated with marine life. Colin 去澳洲玩水肺潜水，因为他一直对海洋生物深深着迷。又或者说 ，the area is a sanctuary for marine wildlife. 这个区域是海洋野生动物保护区Okay, let's talk about the first paragraph in today's lesson. You know,、uh, it's、uh, spring now, and of course, summer is coming. So maybe you ought to plan your vacation. Maybe you'd like to go to Palau and hang out at a beach with nice sand and get a suntan. Maybe do some water sports, learn scuba diving, or whatever. So we're introducing you to Palau in today's program. So here in the first paragraph, it says. A chain of about 340 islands in the Pacific Ocean is home to some of the best dive locations and richest marine life in the world. So, of course, Palau is not just one island; it is many, many islands. In fact, we're describing Palau as a chain of about 340 islands. So, a chain. Usually, if you talk about a chain, you're talking about one link after the other in a line. So a chain of to me means they're kind of lined up in one line or very close together. You could have a chain of、uh, convenience stores, for example, like、uh, Family Mart is a chain of convenience stores in Japan, Taiwan, and probably in other places. But、uh, this is just a bunch of islands together, 340 of them all together. In the Pacific Ocean, and of course, there are lots of things to see and do there. There you go. Now, if I were feeling fancy, I would say, "Hmm, a chain of islands." There's a word for that, isn't there? The word could be 
archipelago. You maybe people refer to this as being the Palau archipelago. Now, I've never heard anyone say that, but it wouldn't be imprecise or inaccurate to say this. But here, yes, we've got a chain of islands, 340 islands. It's there in the Pacific Ocean, and this is Palau. And Palau is wonderful. Get this, it's home to some of the best dive locations and richest marine life in the world. Now, first of all, if a place is home to something, okay, these things, or this thing I should say, can be found in that place. So we're talking about these dive locations. Apparently, if you wanna go scuba diving, Palau is paradise. There are some of the best dive locations in the world found in Palau. So we're saying here that yes, Palau is home to the best dive locations. These dive locations can be found in Palau. If you go to Palau, Bring your scuba tanks, bring your scuba gear, because if you can dive, you are going to love it there. Indeed. So, of course, uh, it's a good dive location there if you're into that sort of thing. If you already know how to scuba dive, great. But I'm sure they offer classes there as well. And, of course, it's got lots of marine life there. You can probably see lots of coral and sharks and uh, squid and stuff like that. I'm sure it would be quite exciting if you're into scuba diving. I don't really know how to do scuba diving myself. I'm not particularly interested in that. I assume coming from Florida, uh, you know all about scuba diving, right, Jeff? When I was young, I did some scuba diving, okay? I probably couldn't do it right now if I didn't practice a lot, but Palau is good enough that I'm willing to consider taking scuba diving back up. I might start diving just so that I can go to Palau and visit some of these dive locations that they have there, some of these world-famous dive locations. By the way, very simply a location is just a place. There are going to be a lot of great places where you can go diving in Palau. And yes, when we're saying diving here, we're referring to scuba diving, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and move on here. The next sentence says, if you want to be transported to a tropical paradise, pack your beach gear and hop on a plane to Palau. And like I said before, this is something that anyone in Taiwan can do, okay? Palau is within your reach. You just need to jump on or hop on a plane. Take a plane tomorrow. You can get to Palau in no time flat. Well, it would take a few hours, but you would be there very, very quickly. Anyways, before we take a break here, let's talk about the word gear Okay, here, gear is equipment, okay? It's the stuff that you need to do some activity. So your beach gear, that's all the stuff that you're gonna have to have to have a good day at the beach, okay? You're gonna need your towel and your swim trunks and buckets and shovels and a big umbrella so that you don't get a sunburn and stuff like that. When I'm talking about all of these things and more, I'm talking about beach gear or beach equipment. Now, one note. Okay, the word here, gear, and the word equipment is going to be non-count. You can't say, oh, I'm going to bring my beach gears or my beach equipments. That being said, yeah, the word gear, though, if it's used in another way, isn't non-count. It becomes countable, like if you have a Swiss watch. There are all sorts of gears inside that watch, special parts of that watch. But that's not the case here. The word gear in beach gear here is definitely non-count. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Undersea wonders are a major draw of this island nation. Blue Corner, where divers can hook themselves to the reef and watch sharks, turtles, manta rays, and more swim by. And Blue Holes, an enormous underwater cave, are once-in-a-lifetime experiences. After your time in the water, get some sun at Long Beach within the Southern Rock Islands. It's the perfect place for finding shells and admiring the crystal clear waters. This stretch of sand only rises above the water level at low tide, so you should plan in advance for a visit. Julie received a beautiful crystal vase for her birthday. Julie 生日时收到一个漂亮的水晶花瓶。而 crystal 除了当形容词之外，还可以当名词使用，指水晶或结晶体。所以我们可以说 ，Around her neck, Violet wore a blue crystal on a silver chain. Violet 脖子上挂着一条有蓝色水晶坠饰的银链。
It's time now for us to discuss the second part of today's lesson. So let's get to it. Undersea wonders are a major draw of this island nation. So yes, if you enjoy scuba diving or snorkeling, for that matter, this is a major attraction of Palau. So here we've got undersea. That just refers to things that are in the ocean, under the surface. So the undersea world. If you're into that, if you like scuba diving,、uh, checking out whales, looking at coral and Things like that. Well, there are lots of undersea wonders there, and that's a major draw there. Here we've got draw as a noun. That just means an attraction to the place. That's why people go there. That's why they are drawn to Palau. And here in the next sentence, it says blue corner where divers can hook themselves to the reef and watch sharks, turtles, manta rays, and more swim by. And blue holes, an enormous underwater cave, are once in a lifetime experiences. So I guess these are some of the draws of Palau. One is called Blue Corner. Okay, I guess that's underwater. You can hook yourself to the coral reef there. So here we've got hook. As a verb, that means you basically attach a hook to something so something else won't get away. Maybe you can hook a trailer to your truck or something like that. In this particular case, I'm imagining divers with some kind of rope or something with a hook at the end, and they can hook it to the reef so that they don't get washed away by the current or something like that. Well, there you go. Here, if you hook yourself to something. You attach yourself, or you connect yourself to something, and you do that in such a way so that you don't float away. Let's say, okay. So here, if you're connected to the reef, you are fastened to that reef. You're not going to be taken away by the current. Now, very often, mountain climbers too, they want to hook themselves to rock faces. They use a special fastener called a hook or a clasp or something like that, and they connect themselves to that rock face or that mountain so that they can't. Fall off. So here we're not talking about a fishing hook, but the idea is similar because if you're using a fishing hook, you have this curved piece of metal and you hook a fish with it. I.e., it goes in the fish's mouth and it gets stuck there and it won't come out. The fish is connected to you and you are connected to the fish and you reel it in. So the idea is not the same here. You're not going to be using a fishing hook to connect to the reef, but you are using a piece of metal, let's say, that will connect you to the reef in such a way that you are safe and sound and secure and fastened to that reef. So don't worry if you go to Blue Corner, you're not going to be taken away by waves and the tide or anything like that. You will be hooked to the reef, and there you'll be safe and sound, and you can watch sharks and turtles and manta rays and all sorts of stuff. Anyways, it's Blue Corner. Let's go ahead and move on to Blue Holes, which apparently is an enormous underwater cave. If something is enormous, it's huge. It's very big in size. It's extremely large. Yep, and of course it's underwater, so it's not above the water. So you need to probably know how to do some kind of diving if you want to explore that underwater cave. And going to Blue Corner or Blue Holes would be part of some once-in-a-lifetime experiences. You'll always remember your time going to these places. Now, after your time in the water, get some sun at Long Beach within the Southern Rock Islands. So if you're a kind of bored. Of scuba diving at this point, and you want to get above the water, well, go to the beach here. Get some sun, which means you're probably going to enjoy the sun, get a suntan or something like that, play some beach volleyball or whatever, and you can do this at a very nice beach called Long Beach. And its location is within the Southern Rock Islands. I guess that's a part of Palau. Sounds about right to me. Now more on Long Beach. It's the perfect place for finding shells and admiring the crystal clear water. So before we were kind of focused on reefs and diving and stuff like that. And these things are fantastic. But if you go to a tropical beach paradise, you're gonna want to go to the beach as well. And Palau, well, Palau has a beach for you that you're going to love. It's called Long Beach. It's a perfect place for finding shells, seashells, and also admiring and looking at the crystal clear waters. Yes, the water there in Palau is very, very clear. It's 
crystal clear and it's a beautiful blue. You're going to love it there if you go to Long Beach, the perfect place to admire the crystal clear waters of Palau. By crystal, of course, is Shui Jing in Chinese. And as you know, crystal is quite clear, quite bright, quite shiny. So you can imagine that the water there is very clear. You can see all the way to the bottom and you can see the fish. It's probably quite amazing. Well, this stretch of sand only rises above the water level at low tide. So you should plan in advance for a visit. So you can only go there at certain times during the day. We've got the tides, of course. That are affected by the moon and the sun. When the water in the ocean is high, well, that's high tide. And when the water in the ocean is low, well, that's low tide. So you can only go to this stretch of sand at low tide. Otherwise, you'd be in the water. So here, a stretch of sand, just a long expanse of sand that goes on for many miles. It's quite long. I could say there's a stretch of sand at Fulong as well. The beach there is quite large. It goes. Goes on for quite some time there, quite some distance, and yes, indeed, be careful there because you need to know when it's low tide if you want to hang out at that beach. There you go. So know when it's low tide, and how can you do that? Well, you'll know when it's low tide by doing proper research. Yes, plan in advance for a visit to Long Beach. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be back with more after this. Looking for adventure? Check out Jellyfish Lake as your next stop. This saltwater lake was cut off from the sea thousands of years ago, and the golden jellyfish that live there are harmless to humans. You can swim among them as they serenely float in the water. Be sure to bring a waterproof camera so you can capture the magic of the moment. The third part, we see a word called saltwater. 这个字是形容词，指咸水的。例如 ，clown anemone fish is a kind of saltwater fish. 小丑鱼是一种咸水鱼。另外，补充 saltwater 的反义词 freshwater， 指淡水的。所以，我们可以说 ，Our camping place last night was near a freshwater pond. 我们昨晚的营地在一个淡水的池塘旁边。接着，我们看到一个单字 serenely。这个字是副词，课文中指的是宁静地。像是 Sarah sat serenely at the bar, sipping her drinks alone. Sarah 宁静的坐在酒吧独自啜饮她的饮料。而 serenely 除了以上的意思外，还可以指安详的。所以我们可以说 Harold and Susan watched their baby sleep serenely. Harold 和 Susan 看着他们的宝宝睡得很安详。另外 ，serenely 去掉字尾的 ly， 则可以成为它的形容词。举例来说。The cabin's serene setting made it the perfect place for Joan to work on her novel. 那栋小屋宁静的环境使之成为 Joan 写小说的绝佳地点。最后，我们看到形容词 waterproof 用来指防水的。例如 ，Ryan always carried a waterproof jacket in case it rained. Ryan 总是带着一件防水外套以防下雨。Okay, now we're going to talk about the third part of our lesson. And as you know, jellyfish are pretty scary. If you come in contact with a jellyfish here in Taiwan, it might sting you. It's going to hurt. You could get infected. So you got to watch out for jellyfish. But I guess the jellyfish in this lake in Palau are harmless.、Uh, we'll talk about that right now. So maybe you are looking for adventure. Well, check out Jellyfish Lake. As your next stop. So so far, you've been scuba diving, and you've hung out at the beach. You got some sun at Long Beach, but now you want some adventure. So you can go to this lake called Jellyfish Lake. That will be your next destination, your next stop. There you go. So if you want adventure, check out Jellyfish Lake. Now more on this lake, this saltwater lake. It's a lake with salt water in it. This salt water lake was cut off from the sea thousands of years ago, and the golden jellyfish that live there 
are harmless to humans. So apparently this lake was once a part of the ocean, okay? But then it was cut off from the sea there thousands of years ago and formed its own salt water habitat. It became its own salt water lake. And in that lake, there are these harmless jellyfish, which by the way, sounds very good to me. Otherwise, I do not like jellyfish. They sting you and they're kind of nasty. But here, these are harmless jellyfish. So you can kind of enjoy them. Now, before we move on, let's talk about this phrase to be cut off from something. Here, this lake was cut off from the sea. That means it was isolated from or was separated from the sea thousands of years ago. For example, you could say the island of Madagascar features exotic wildlife found nowhere else on earth because long ago, this island was cut off from Africa. You could say the same thing about Australia as well. It was cut off from Asia. So, of course, you've got uh, weird animals there like kangaroos and wallabies and what have you. But, yes, this lake was separated from the sea many thousands of years ago. And I guess because of that, the jellyfish gradually lost their poison. So we've got the golden jellyfish there that describes their color here. And they are harmless to humans. So don't worry about getting stung by the jellyfish there. You'll be all right. You can swim among them as they serenely float in the water. Serenely, that's an adverb from the adjective serene, which means kind of calm and peaceful. Yes, they just kind of float past you as if they have no worries in the world, and I'm sure it's quite an experience. Me too. But be sure to bring a waterproof camera so you can capture the magic of the moment. Yes, you won't want to forget swimming amongst these serene jellyfish. All right, everyone, that's it for day one of our article on Palau. But don't worry, we'll be back next time with more. And for now, hey, the Chinese teacher is on her way. Blue Corner, where divers can hook themselves to the reef and watch sharks, turtles, manta rays, and more swim by, and Blue Holes, an enormous underwater cave, are once in a lifetime experiences. 在蓝角, 潜水客可以把自己勾在珊瑚礁看着鲨鱼、海龟、鬼蝠蜂和其他的生物来游过。还有蓝洞是一个巨大的水底洞穴。这两者都是毕生难得的经验。好，这个句子虽然看起来很长
。好，那接着我们来学习这个同位语的用法。同位语通常它会摆在名词或是名词片语的后面来做补充说明。那同位语在句子里面要用逗号跟句子隔开。举例来说 ，She lives in Seoul, the capital of South Korea. 她住在首尔。那是南韩的首都。那么 ，the capital of South Korea， 南韩的首都就是同位语，去补充说明它前面的名词 Seoul 首尔。好，那其实同位语它可以当做非限定用法关系子句简化而来的分词片语。像刚刚的例句呢，我们本来可以写作 She lives in Seoul。Which is the capital of South Korea? 然后我们把这个关系代名词 which 省略，再把动词 is 改成现在分词 being， 就会变成 being 开头嘛。那接着还可以再把 being 省略，就会简化成 She lives in Seoul, the capital of South Korea. 好，那我们回头来看课文的句子哦。Blue holes 后面接了。An enormous underwater cave 就是同位语，用来补充说明蓝洞是一个巨大的水底洞穴。好，那它也可以写成关系子句 ，which is an enormous underwater cave。那其中这个 which 就可以用来指前面的先行词 blue holes。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Location。We are writing to inform you that the location of Thursday's event has been changed. Marine. Daisy loves to learn about marine animals by watching online videos. Gear. This backpack can't fit all the gear I need to pack, so I need to buy a larger one. Hook. For safety reasons, climbers should hook themselves to the rock wall. Enormous. Everyone screamed as an enormous spider ran out from under the couch. Crystal. Henry watched the fish swimming in the crystal clear water of the river. Waterproof. Angelina put her phone in a waterproof case. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways. I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you, you next, next time. time.